In recent years, there's been a significant increase in the number of winter finches visiting gardens here in the UK. This was partly due to the lack of natural food in the wild, and the increased use of niger seed and sunflower hearts in garden feeders. So it's worth taking a closer look and getting to know these colourful little birds. The bullfinch is widespread but localised, and particularly likes areas with open orchards, where it's sometimes seen as a pest, as one of its favourite foods are the new buds on fruit trees. They're very sedentary birds, and usually pair up for life, so if you're lucky enough to have them visit your garden, you'll probably see the same pair year after year. They usually go around in pairs, and can be seen at any time of the year, but if you just see one, listen out for that rather plaintive call that they make to keep in touch with each other, and the other one will probably be somewhere close by in the vicinity. They both have similar markings, the only difference being, the male has a striking rose pink face and breast, whereas the female is a more sombre pinkish grey. The juvenile lacks the black head and bib and is more brownish in colour. It's surprising how many different species of colourful finches you can see in your garden here in the UK. Obviously this depends on whether your garden is urban or rural and also to what part of the country you live in. Here, where I live on the, the Oxfinch's heavy bill, West is ideal for eating I've seen eight different flowers. species in the garden. But it's so amazing far. how agile it can be when it comes to eating small wildflower seeds like forget-me-nots. In the autumn, the bullfinch is one of the first birds to start eating the berries off their own trees. It's a very messy eater though, it just seems to eat the seeds and discard the rest of the berry. The siskin is one of the smaller finches, and the male is a striking combination of green and yellow, with a black cap and bib. The female is a duller and more stripy version of the male, but lacks the black cap and bib. The siskin is a year-round UK resident, but in the Midlands and South East it's usually only a winter visitor and tends to visit gardens during February, March and April, when its natural food supply of seed from spruce and pine and also alder and silver birch start to get scarce. For attracting them to the garden, I found that both sunflower hearts and niger seeds seem to be their favourite food. One of the joys of having siskins in the garden is that you can get quite close up to them when they're feeding, as they're far less timid and skittish than most of the other finches. This has been an exceptional year for the number of siskins visiting the garden. For such a small bird, they're extremely feisty and seem to be falling out a lot of the time. The goldfinch is probably the most easily recognisable finch to visit our gardens. In this year's 2016 Big Garden Bird Watch, it was the sixth most recorded garden visitor. It has a black head with white cheeks and a bright red face mask, black wings with a broad yellow band on them. Here the male is using them in an aggressive threat display, but it also shows them off in its courtship display to the female. It's not that long ago 
that the chaffinch and greenfinch would have been the most common finches seen in the garden. But with the increased use of sunflower hearts and niger seed in garden feeders, goldfinches soon found this year-round easy source of food and have rapidly become the top garden visitor among the finches. Outside the breeding season, they will gather in small flocks, appropriately called charms, to feed, but in the autumn and winter they will gather into larger flocks as they prepare to roost. I've been lucky enough to see and hear them each day as they gather in increasing numbers until there are about 70 to 80 of them, and they finally drop down into the evergreen trees and bushes opposite the house to roost for the night. Telling the sex of goldfinches with any certainty is a tricky problem because there can be quite a lot of variation in their markings. This is a good example of a female and here we have a male. If you want more information on this you can see one of my other videos, the Goldfinch ID Guide. There's a link in the description below or a link at the end of this video. The Bramling breeds in Northern Europe, so here in the UK it's just a winter visitor, but we get to see it from mid-September right through to the middle of March. It's one of the larger finches, about the same size as the chaffinch, and has a more powerful looking bill. The main features that distinguish it from the chaffinch are the white belly and the white rump which shows well in flight, and it also has a much brighter orange breast. The males have a black head in the breeding season, but as you can see here with these two, in the winter it's a mottled greyish brown. And it won't be until late spring that the ends of the feathers will have braided away sufficiently to reveal a jet black head, which unfortunately we don't get to see over here in the UK, as they'll be well on their way back to Northern Europe to breed again. In the winter, the Bramling is almost exclusively a seed eater, which it normally finds on the ground. So if you're trying to attract them to the garden, it's best to put out some extra seed for them on the ground. Or better still, on the top of flat stones or logs. This very familiar, but rather tedious and repetitive sound made by the chaffinch is known as the rain call. It's supposed to foretell rain and bad weather. It's a bit unlikely, but with the summer we've just had, the odds on it being right with its forecast have greatly increased this year. The chaffinch is widespread and the commonest of the UK finches. The UK population is resident, but is augmented in the winter by migrants from Scandinavia. You're likely to see many more in your garden during the winter, but they also form in large flocks with other finches, searching the fields for seeds. One thing that chaffinches are particularly prone to is scaly mite. It forms a white scaly covering on the legs and feet, as you can see on the right leg of this male. Most of the time it doesn't seem to hamper them too much, but occasionally a very bad infestation can make it difficult for them to perch.
It depends very much on where you live as to whether you're likely to see a linnet in your garden. But it's very much a country bird, preferring open ground with low bushes and hedges, and has a preference for open commons with gorse. It's a rather pleasant song, can be heard for most of the year, and is usually delivered from the top of low bushes, often in the face of quite strong winds. In the winter, they can gather into quite large flocks to feed and roost. The largest flock I've seen is about 400 birds. I've not actually seen one in the garden yet. The closest they've been is this small winter flock in the trees opposite the house, so I'm still hoping. The lesser redpole can be seen all across the UK throughout the year, but where I live, here in the Midlands, it's only a winter visitor. Again, it's one of the smaller finches and can be easily recognised by its black bib and red forehead. During the breeding season, the male also has a red flush on its breast. It's one of the most variable of the finches, and this sometimes makes it very difficult to separate the male and the female. And things can also be complicated by the common or mealy red pole that can be seen very occasionally in the winter, when small numbers cross the North Sea from Scandinavia and Northern Europe. If you want more information about this, there's a link at the end of this video to a more detailed guide to red pole identification. I once thought of the greenfinch as a common garden visitor, but since the disease called trichomonosis was found in greenfinches in 2005, their numbers have steadily declined until I now think of it as a special event if I see one in the garden. Even if you can't see them, you can always tell if they're in the vicinity by that repetitive wheezy call that they make. Some of its other calls and its flight song are much more pleasant to listen to though. The male is a lovely olive green with bright yellow wing patches, whereas the female is duller than the male and slightly more streaky. The juvenile is similar to the female, but browner and a bit more streaky looking. 